Water is fundamental to life, essential for hydration, cooking and sanitation. However, when contaminated, it can become a vehicle for harmful substances that pose significant health risks. Sarah's story brings to light the dangers of toxins like lead and fluoride in drinking water and underscores the importance of vigilance in water safety. At 40 years old, Sarah, a mother of two, began noticing unusual symptoms in her children – fatigue, irritability and difficulty concentrating. Simultaneously, she experienced joint pain and digestive issues. After numerous doctor visits and tests, the culprit was identified, chronic exposure to lead and other toxins in their household water supply. Sarah's journey highlights the critical impact of waterborne contaminants on health and the necessity of proactive measures to ensure water safety. Types of waterborne toxins and contaminants. Various toxins, minerals and chemicals can contaminate water, leading to adverse health effects, lead, a heavy metal that can leach into water from old pipes and plumbing fixtures, fluoride, added to water supplies for dental health benefits, but can cause issues in excessive amounts. Arsenic occurs naturally in the Earth's crust and can contaminate groundwater. Mercury, released into the environment through industrial processes and can enter water bodies. Nitrates and nitrites, common in agricultural areas due to fertilizer runoff. Per and polyfluoroalkyl substances, PFAS. Synthetic chemicals used in various industrial applications. Chlorine and chloramine, used as disinfectants in water treatment but can form harmful byproducts. Pesticides and herbicides, runoff from agricultural lands contaminating water sources. Microbial contaminants, bacteria, viruses, and parasites like E. coli and Giardia. Epidemiology. Water contamination is a global concern affecting millions. Global impact. According to the World Health Organization, WHO, at least 2 billion people use a drinking water source contaminated with feces, which can transmit diseases like cholera and dysentery. Lead exposure. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, estimates that at least 4 million households have children exposed to high levels of lead. Fluoride overexposure. In certain regions, naturally high fluoride levels in water lead to dental and skeletal fluorosis. Arsenic contamination affects over 140 million people in 50 countries, particularly in Bangladesh and parts of India. Sources and causes of water contamination. Understanding how these contaminants enter water supplies is crucial. Aging infrastructure, lead pipes and fixtures, Old plumbing can leach lead into the water, especially when water is acidic or has low mineral content. Industrial pollution, discharges. Factories may release heavy metals like mercury and arsenic into waterways. PFAS release. Industrial sites manufacturing non-stick coatings and firefighting foams can contaminate nearby water sources. Agricultural runoff. Fertilizers, high in nitrates and nitrites can seep into groundwater. Pesticides and herbicides, chemicals used in farming, can contaminate surface and groundwater. Natural occurrences, mineral deposits. Certain areas have high natural concentrations of arsenic and fluoride in groundwater. Inadequate water treatment, disinfection byproducts. Chlorination can lead to harmful compounds if not properly managed. Waste disposal landfills. Leachate can contaminate groundwater if not properly contained. Sewage overflows can introduce microbial contaminants into water sources. Mechanisms of action causing pathologies. Contaminants can affect the body in various ways. Lead causes neurological effects by interfering with neurotransmitter function and brain development, especially in children, leading to cognitive deficits and behavioral problems. Hematological effects. It inhibits enzymes involved in heme synthesis, causing anemia. It also damages the kidneys, impairing their ability to filter waste. Cardiovascular effects. Lead poisoning increases blood pressure and risk of heart disease. Fluoride causes dental fluorosis. Excess fluoride disrupts enamel formation, leading to discoloration and pitting of teeth. It causes skeletal fluorosis. Accumulation in bones causes pain, stiffness and joint mobility issues. 
Arsenic causes carcinogenic effects. Long-term exposure increases the risk of skin, bladder, and lung cancers. Dermatological effects. It causes skin lesions, hyperkeratosis, and hyperpigmentation. Cardiovascular and neurological effects. It leads to peripheral neuropathy and cardiovascular diseases. Mercury leads to neurotoxicity. It damages the nervous system, leading to tremors, cognitive deficits, and sensory disturbances. Nitrates and nitrites cause methemoglobinemia. They convert hemoglobin to methemoglobin, reducing oxygen transport in the blood. It is particularly dangerous for infants, known as blue baby syndrome. Sequelae and health outcomes. The long-term health consequences of exposure include 1. Cognitive impairment. Children exposed to lead may experience reduced IQ, learning disabilities, and attention disorders. Chronic diseases, increased risk of hypertension, kidney disease, and certain cancers. Developmental delays. Prenatal exposure to toxins can result in birth defects and developmental delays. 2. Skeletal issues. Excess fluoride leads to brittle bones and increased fracture risk. Detection and diagnosis? Ah, uh, it's crucial for intervention. Identifying exposure is essential to begin addressing the issue. Let's start with water testing. Laboratory analysis involves testing water samples for contaminants like lead, arsenic, fluoride and others. Home testing kits are available for preliminary screening, but these should be confirmed by certified labs to ensure accuracy. Next, we have biomonitoring. Blood lead levels can be measured through blood tests, and urine tests can assess exposure to arsenic and other metals. Clinical assessment is another important step. Healthcare providers evaluate symptoms in the context of possible exposure. For children, developmental screening is conducted to identify any cognitive or behavioral issues that might be related to contamination. Finally, environmental assessment is about source identification. This involves investigating potential sources of contamination in the home or community. Treatment options vary based on the contaminant. For lead poisoning, chelation therapy involves medications like EDTA that bind to lead for excretion. Supportive care addresses symptoms and manages complications. In cases of fluoride overexposure, Fluoride removal can be achieved by installing defluoridation systems in water supplies, and medical management treats symptoms of skeletal fluorosis. For arsenic poisoning, chelation therapy with agents like dimercoprol may be used, along with supportive care to manage symptoms and monitor organ function. General interventions include nutritional support, ensuring adequate intake of calcium, iron, and vitamin C to reduce the absorption of certain toxins and hydration to encourage fluid intake and aid in excretion. Preventing exposure is the most effective approach. Water treatment solutions include filtration systems using reverse osmosis, distillation, or activated alumina filters to remove contaminants, and upgrading community treatment plants to effectively remove toxins. Infrastructure improvements involve replacing lead pipes, with governments and utilities investing in modern plumbing and regular maintenance to prevent corrosion and leaks. Regulatory measures are also crucial, with agencies like the Environmental Protection Agency or EPA setting maximum contaminant levels and monitoring compliance through regular inspections and enforcement. Public education plays a significant role, with awareness campaigns informing the public about risks and prevention methods and advising on safe practices like flushing taps and using cold water for cooking. Environmental protection efforts focus on reducing industrial emissions by implementing cleaner technologies and waste management, and promoting sustainable agriculture to minimize fertilizer and pesticide runoff. Community action includes advocacy, with residents pushing for policy changes and infrastructure investments and organizing community water testing initiatives. Sarah's proactive steps made a significant difference. For medical intervention, her children underwent chelation therapy to reduce lead levels and received special education services to address learning difficulties. A home assessment confirmed high levels of lead and other contaminants through water testing, 
and a professional inspection identified old lead pipes and fixtures. Infrastructure changes included replacing the pipes with new plumbing made of safe materials and adding a whole house filtration unit certified to remove lead and other toxins. Sarah also raised awareness by sharing her story to inform neighbours and community members and collaborated with local authorities to address broader water safety issues. Lifestyle adjustments involved dietary changes, increasing foods rich in calcium and iron to reduce toxin absorption, and regular health checkups for ongoing monitoring of her family's health. Psychological support through counselling helped address the emotional stress of the experience. Over time, Sarah's children's health improved and their cognitive functions began to recover with appropriate interventions. Her actions not only safeguarded her family, but also contributed to positive changes in her community's water safety. Sarah's experience underscores the profound impact waterborne toxins can have on health and the importance of vigilance in water safety. Contaminants like lead fluoride and other harmful substances pose significant risks, particularly to vulnerable populations like children. Through awareness, proactive detection, effective treatment and preventive measures, it is possible to mitigate these dangers. Ensuring access to clean, safe water is a fundamental public health priority that requires a collective effort from individuals, communities and governments.